Good evening, y'all. We want to welcome y'all to Southern Pride Outdoors. This is going to be our pre-turkey season product reviews of this, uh, the products that we used and the partnerships that we've developed through this past hunting season. And just go through our tactics of how we used them. To start this off, I want to introduce Buzzard Roost Saddles. They are the partners of Southern Pride Outdoors. They brought us on last year. Could not thank Benny enough for taking the chance of us and putting us in an amazing saddle. The first thing you'll notice about Buzzard Roost Saddles, or that I noticed about Buzzard Roost Saddles, is I got a patch on mine. And I love this because it's for the military members, first responders. Every time I don this saddle on or put this saddle on and I see that patch, it makes me think of my brother who's currently overseas serving and for the sacrifices that not just him but all other service members and first responders have given us the right to do so every time i put this saddle on i think of how they're overseas they're not getting to enjoy this passion that we get and i want to thank benny and them at buzzer saddles for doing stuff like this they give a saddle away to a veteran a few of them every year and they can customize it to your camouflage for your branch of military and it's amazing what they're doing with the veterans and then another thing i noticed whenever i was looking into these and was how they're made of mesh they're not like i don't know if you can actually see my hand through it but they're made of mesh they're not made of actually like a a full body uh panel uh, I have real bad problems being in the south. Our early season hunts are normally 80 to 90 degrees. And these don't stink. They don't hold any smell. A few things that I've added to mine um, is going to be different than a lot of people. Mine's a little bit heavier than a lot of people's that's hunting out of any saddle. These dump pouches I ordered from Amazon, they carry my lima's belt, my tether, and my pull-up rope. And once I get in the tree... I put my call into one of the pockets of these dump pouches. Another amazing feature that Benny and them to, came up with is this two part, this is a two part saddle. We'll get into that just shortly. Was the clips for the saddle. So my back band is always connected to my saddle. We'll talk about adjustability on that. So the Buzzer Roo saddle was voted the most adjustable saddle on the market. It has so you have an adjustable bridge, you can adjust your leg strap, adjust your waist strap. Uh, the tether is adjustable without having to have the mechanical carabiner uh, to uh, make it adjustable. It's tied with a Prusik knot, has a few more little doohickeys. I'm not a knot guy, I could not tell you. But you just pull it up and it, it holds the tension so you can drop and go. Uh, saddle hunting, to me, was well, started out as a fad. I never really got into it till I won a saddle off of a raffle. And ever since then, I have been addicted to it. I love the accessibility of it. I can literally put my saddle on before I even go in the woods, put my sticks and my platform on my bag, walk in the woods and get into any tree I want to get into, basically. I'm a pretty big old guy, so you ain't going to see me climb a tree about that big around. That's not going to happen. But... We're going to go through some of my tactics. I'm going to don the saddle on, um, show y'all some of the features that I've added, as in my XOP clips. My XOP clips paired with my XOP Ultra Singles. I just lock it in like that right there and climb the tree, and I got two of them on my back whenever I climb the tree. Okay, so now I've got my saddle on. Uh, I've got my platform just setting knee level off the ground so I can show y'all a little bit more of the tactics I use, the footwork that I use. I wish I would have brought my bow out, but I did not bring it out today. <clears throat> so one safety measure that y'all need to understand for any kind of stand is never leave the ground without being attached to it. I'm knee high. I'm not going to put my lima's belt on, but I got my tether. And what, I'll go ahead and clip it in, even though I'm knee high. Even though I'm knee high, it's a good practice to get into of never leaving the ground without being connected, secured to the tree. Now I'll climb up in this. Uh, 
Okay, so now I'm up here. I set my... I always set my tether about eyeball height. That's more of a, um, a filming thing for me. The reason being is, and I always set my by leaning backwards. I set mine at eyeball height because whenever I'm filming, I have my camera arm face towards me. That way I got plenty of room to rotate around the tree to get the film. So let's talk about the adjustments on this saddle. First off, on your tether right here, if I want to tighten my tether up, all I got to do is pull it. And then set back. If I want to get a little bit closer to the tree, my bridge has the same exact mechanicals, mechanics as this tether. So if I want to get closer to the tree, I'm setting up higher now. I like to set farther back than a lot of people. So I'm sitting in a tree about like this angle most of the day. But advantages for me on saddle hunting is I like to be, I like for the deer to come off my left side about about the nine o'clock hour. If we say facing the tree is 12, I like it to be about nine o'clock is where I want my trail for the deer to come. They come through and if they make a adjustment and go to either one side or the other of the tree, I'm not making that much movement. The most movement you'll see out of a saddle is whenever you're facing backwards to do shots in my opinion. So with that being said, if I had my bow right here, my footwork, I know you can't see my feet, but my footwork on this was if the deer's coming right here, I'm just going to pick my bow up from this position and I'm going right there and making the shot. If I'm having to follow the deer, if it's coming in a little bit hot and I can't get it to stop back here, all I'm going to do is plant my foot into my platform and I'm going to drop my knee to it. And I'm just going to follow the deer around. Keeping constant pressure on this tree. I've seen people where they do it higher up on the platform these most of these platforms today has the bar on top i've seen people where they cross their feet and do it my personal preference is just burying that knee into the tree and following that deer around wherever i need it to go at this angle right here i can shoot all the way through my 12 12 o'clock position and the same thing on this side but instead of burying my knee in it I'm burying my foot in it and I'm crossing over my bridge. So if my bow's right here, I'll raise my bow up over my bridge. I'll go over top and I'm shooting from this position and I can follow it around. That's my footwork in the way that I shoot. My backward shots, if a deer come directly from behind me, is a little bit more tricky for me. You'll see people that will go underneath their bridge and turn around and shoot. I don't. I literally just pivot my body so I'll be pivoting this way. So I'll take my foot and I'll plant it in the middle of my platform and I just turn my body around to wherever I need it to go. At that point I could shoot uh, 360 degrees around the tree. This uh, saddle personally has brought me a lot of I would say luck this year. I saw a lot of deers out of the saddle, but I was very selective this year also. Um, I killed a big nine, but it wasn't out of the saddle. I never made it to the tree I wanted to get in the saddle in. But I want to thank Benny for taking us for this. I highly recommend this saddle. It's a perfect fit for my body. I don't have no hip pinch. I'm able to get through all of my stuff every hunt. But I do want to thank y'all for joining us on this YouTube video as I gave you my review of the Buzzer Groove Saddle. Hanging out and enjoying this time with us. I want to thank Benny for allowing us to be a part of the team. And if y'all are out of Chattanooga, June the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, um, stop by the Mobile Hunters Expo. I will be there with uh, Buzzer Groove Saddles. 
I'll probably be doing this most of the day. Be hanging out, meeting people, talking to people, trying to get them in a saddle. Um, I believe everybody at some point needs to experience this type of hunting because it's going to make you a, my opinion, it's going to make you a more well-rounded hunter because you are going to want to move. You're going to want to rock. You're going to want to sway in this. Y'all follow us on all social media platforms. We're on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And subscribe to our YouTube while you're at it. Thank y'all very much, and I hope y'all have a blessed day.